think that sounds like a very fun children's choir. I read these merry gentlemen, so looking forward to that. Well, it's good to see everybody again. Uh, if you uh, you might have noticed uh, the title of the sermon for today, and, and I, I'm probably dating myself maybe just a little bit. I don't know why I am, but uh, I think it was Neil Diamond uh, who sang uh, "Rebel Blue Jeans," and uh, this has nothing to do with that. This is uh, the devil in blue jeans, and before you get too uncomfortable, uh, those of you who are wearing jeans here today. Uh, I can tell you a story about that, by the way, but this has nothing to do with the fact that you're wearing blue jeans. I love blue jeans and uh, wear them quite often. Uh, this, uh, what I want to speak with you about is that we see here in the text how that oftentimes uh, choosing our own agenda is a snare to us, and it's laid by the devil himself to defeat Christ's church. And so the title really talks to the fact that more times than not, Satan comes to us in the ordinary. What can be any more ordinary than blue jeans? Oftentimes, and many times, and most of the times I probably would say is that as the Satan would like to attack us in, in those areas of which we least expect in the everyday, ordinary areas of our life. I was, uh, I don't know, I guess I was about 30 years old and, and we were at a church in Kingsport and <clears throat> it was our home church and they had this traveling evangelist came through and did like a three or four day uh, revival and one night, man, he was really, he was fired up and he was preaching and all of a sudden he started preaching on blue jeans and wearing boots in the church and now this started slinking down and guess what I was wearing, blue jeans <laughs> and boots in the church. The devil does come to us in the most ordinary of ways. <coughs> if there's any doubt about that, all we need to do is go right back to the very beginning of the scripture, in the beginning of time, and see in, in, in the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve is there, and everything is just fine, and Danny, God, God, everything's perfect, God made everything just so good. And then this crafty son of creature who I think was probably just an ordinary creature because we didn't see or, or get any indication in the text that they were uh, you know, astonished or astounded or afraid or surprised by the fact that this, uh, the Bible calls it, the serpent came up and started speaking to them. I believe that, that would be a, a, a cue for me today that there might be something going on with this one here. But they didn't seem to be, uh, you know, alarmed whatsoever. So I'm assuming that it was probably something that just ordinary to them. And this subtle, crafty creature, the Bible says, was the devil, Satan. And he came to tempt to lead God's people away from the Lord, away from God. And he was able to do that. The sin entered into the world. As Christians, we are called to be disciples, followers of Jesus Christ. What does it mean to be a disciple? That's a good question. A disciple is someone who, who is in a relationship with the teacher to learn and to apply what the teacher is teaching, what the teacher is saying. That's what a disciple is, a follower. The disciple is not one who teaches his or her own views, his or her own ideas, his or her own ways of doing things. A disciple is one who follows the master. And I believe today in the world that we need to make, we need to really truly understand that the devil comes and wants to lead us astray from the things of God from the life that God has called us to and he wants to do it in such subtle crafty ways I mean think about it Jesus is walking along and he's, and he's done all these wonderful miracles he's done all these wonderful things and, and he's teaching him and suddenly he begins to teach his disciples the truth 
of the matter. And, it, and the Bible says that it was really plain in the matter. He, was, he said, I'm going to go to Jerusalem. I'm going to be I'm going to be tortured. I'm, I'm going to be crucified. But on the third day, I will rise again. And no doubt for the horror of Peter, as he heard these things ringing in his ear, no, Lord. He took Jesus aside and began to rebuke Jesus. No, 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 Jesus. This will never happen to you. And I can, I, you know, it still astonishes me. Jesus' reply, he takes Peter and he says, and he, he turns around and he faces all the disciples and he says, get behind me, Satan. Can, can you imagine how Peter felt? Oh, man. Get behind me. But specifically, I think what we need to hear, I, Jesus wasn't really telling Peter that he was the devil. What he was pointing out is the same thing that we need to see today is that if we begin to follow the interests of man instead of the interests of God, then that is the devil's device for the world today. That's when the devil shows up in religions. Just the ordinary things of our life. He wants to pull us astray, pull us off the path, pull us away from God, to follow the ways of the world. Disciples, true followers of Jesus Christ, they confirm the claims of Christ. We as the body of Christ, we confirm and we proclaim the claims of Jesus Christ. And we need to beware of producing Christ's who suits our claims rather than the claims of Jesus. We need to be uh, aware and we need to be careful that we're not creating our own little gods. And that we're not recreating Jesus in our image instead of, the, of, of what the Bible says that we have been predestined to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. We need to be changed A little every day on that road to sanctification. And it takes work, church. And it takes understanding. And we, just, we must understand that as a disciple, we must confirm the teachings of Jesus in our life instead of conforming ourselves to the way of the world. Peter's answer to Jesus was right on target. Jesus is the Christ, the anointed one. He is the master. But Jesus' teaching and proclamation of his death just did not conform to the idea that Peter had. What about us today? What are the things that we would like to change? Or what are the things that we are changing because we just don't like that? We want it to be this way. Instead of God's way. Disciples confirm the claims of Jesus Christ. But also disciples confront the issues that Christ raises. We see that clearly here in the text. Jesus asked if his disciples are investing or are they wasting their lives. That's what he's really asking. That's what he really proclaims. Whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me and for the gospel will save it. That's investing, folks. That's investing. <coughs> we take our money down to the bank and we lose it into the bank as an investment, which is not too great anymore. We're investing. Are we willing to invest our life for the things of Christ? To lose our life? The control over our life and give Jesus full control? Give the Holy Spirit the full control over our life? Are we willing to invest ourselves in that manner? He says that we are. We will find true life. True life. Who 
governs your life today? Jesus asked his disciples, who governs your life? Is our life governed by the devil's devices? Are we governed by the ways of the world? Are we governed by how everybody else does it? Or are we governed by the teachings of Jesus Christ, the teachings of the Scripture? You know, it's so easy to proclaim Christ, yet reject the cross. And you've got to know this morning that Satan's whole purpose I want to, I'll take you back just, uh, just, just for a moment. Let's think about when Jesus was, was uh, uh, driven into the wilderness and he was tempted for all those 40 days. He was tempted for all that time and, and the devil came to him on, on those occasions, three occasions I believe it was. And every time what he offered Jesus was a way around the cross. Wasn't it? He was offering a way to have the world without the cost of the cross. I, 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 I think about the story and I go, man, he's trying to, the, the devil's trying to sell Jesus something he already owns. <laughs> How often did that happen to us? Every time we get this desire to, that we, we think we can go out and spend a lot of money to make ourselves feel better, you know what? All that is is the devil trying to sell us something we already own. You have everything that you need to be joyous and happy in Christ Jesus. You have it all. Most of us need to change between the ears. Our perceptions need to change about who we are. Instead of the material things of the world defining who we are, let's let the Lord define who we are in Him. It'll forever change our lives. It's so easy to proclaim Christ, yet deny and reject the cross. And as such, we serve Christ and take up the devil's agenda when we do that. Can you imagine? Peter. Of all people, Peter. The devil... God forbid. No. But just like Peter, on any given day, in any given moment, we can be tempted to leave the ways of God and to follow the ways of evil. All we need to do is choose our way without regard to God's way. And we have rejected the cross when we've done that. The sacrifice. He, he, he tells us to go, that we must choose to take up our cross daily. You know what that really does mean? I mean, we can't go, we can't be put on the cross. It wouldn't do any good for us to go to the cross anyway. Jesus has done that for us. But what we can do is in light of the cross of Christ, what we can do is we can live our days for him. That's what it means to take up our cross. Jesus plainly taught that those who are not with him are against him. See, disciples not only confirm the claims of Jesus, not only do, they, do disciples confront those issues that Jesus raises in our life, but also disciples conform to the patterns that Christ has set for us. You know those patterns. Disciples, they follow after Christ. They follow after Jesus. Disciples, they deny themselves and they pick up the cross. Disciples are always working and proclaiming the joy of the gospel. The disciples keep following, even when the road gets rough. Disciples. Follow. And so this morning... Maybe you're here this morning and maybe the devil has come to you in blue jeans. <coughs> in subtlety. Maybe you've been sold something that you already own. Maybe you're here this morning and 
and life and following the, the, your ways has not worked very well. Following the ways of the world just seems to not work very well. Maybe we need to come back to the Lord. How about you this morning? As we close and as we sing, maybe come, this altar is open for you. Do you need a change? If you're here this morning and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, why not this morning? Right now. The first day, the rest of your eternal life can begin right here this morning. Christ bids you come. Number 364, because he